Hello, everybody. So, as you know, the BIS plays an important role in current international statistical initiatives. Uh, in particular, we have the Data Gaps Initiative endorsed by the G20 uh, after the global financial crisis, and um, BIS statistics are produced in cooperation with many central banks in the world. Uh, we have been continuously improving our data offering in recent years, and the new statistics we present today are another step. The first area is to publish more uh, of BIS own statistics that are collected on the global financial system. And this time, the new data help to assess the exposure of economies to foreign currency risks. And this can be an important source of vulnerability, as seen in previous crises, in particular for emerging market economies. So, this data can be um, on the web page. You have um, here the international banking and financial statistics, which are the BIS traditional statistics on banking, debt securities, and derivatives. And um, what I was mentioning, this new data on uh, foreign currency risk are in this banking statistics. We now publish a currency breakdown of cross-border loans and deposits, and this is part of the BIS locational banking statistics. Um, we also have a second area, which is what we call research indicators, that we compute for vari from various sources. And this work we do for our own use, but we also try to ma make these research indicators publicly available. In recent years, we have produced various data sets, such as inflation, house prices, debt. Uh, the objective is to have research indicators that are as comparable as possible across countries and over a long time because we need to have a long-term view to analyze financial development. As you can see, the BIS research indicators are provided with two main groups that I will highlight now. The first one is the global financial conditions, so we have indicators on that. And the second one below is prices and exchange rates. Um, let me start with the global financial conditions. You see that we have here the global liquidity indicators, the credit, which is in fact debt data that is comparable across countries and across sectors. We have credit to GDP gaps, debt service ratio, external debt statistics, and policy rates, and I will come back to this later. So what we are adding now is the global liquidity uh, indicators. Uh, we will have country-level estimates of total U.S. dollar, euro, and yen credit. And my colleague, Philip Woodridge, head of the International Banking and Financial Statistics and deputy head of uh, BI Statistics, uh, will tell you more in a moment. We have also, as a new data set, on policy rate. It's here. So this is completely new. It covers uh, around 40 countries, and sometimes we have data back to the Second World War. And uh, my colleague Marjorie Santos, deputy head of the data bank services, will also tell you more in a moment. Let me now turn to the second part of these research indicators, which is on prices and exchange rates. So here you have data on consumer prices, property prices for um, residential and commercial properties, and you have effective exchange rates, both nominal and real. What we are adding now is a new data set on US dollar exchange rates. Here. So one advantage of this data set is that it's very completely consistent with the other data sets, for example, the data set on effective exchange rates. Uh, and also, one key advantage is that these series are very long series. 